Welcome to Unitronics uh, webinar on Unican. It is uh, the 20th of April, 2011. Uh, my name is Anthony Nicolaitis here in Unitronics US Tech Support. I have Jason Latiri here as well, uh, who is going to be answering questions if you type them as we go along. Uh, today we'll be going over the Unica Unitronics Unican protocol. Uh, Unican is a CAN bus protocol. We will go over a quick slideshow, and we'll look at an example of two controllers communicating, and then we'll look at an example of our EXRC1 remote expansion adapter uh, communicating to a 570 with a IO DI8 R08 and an IO AI4 A02 sending remote uh, IO uh, back and forth between the controller. Okay, so to get started, again, welcome uh, Unitronics CAN bus communication. We're going to go through this quick slideshow. Uh, first off, CAN bus is a physical layer, uh, meaning it is the uh, the cable and the the network that we communicate over. Uh, we have the ability of connecting up to 63 controllers and a PC, or 64 uh, devices controllers on the CAN bus network. Um, we're going to take a look at two protocols we offer, but first off, here is a uh, wiring diagram of the CAN bus network. You see it is a, <coughs> sorry, like RS-485, it is a uh, daisy chain topology. We have uh, controllers connected. Uh, we have, a, it's a 24 volt uh, power bus. We do need to include a 24 volt power supply. Uh, each of the end uh, controllers needs to have a 120 ohm terminating resistor. Uh, we can see on this chart the uh, baud rates that are capable uh, on this, uh, I'm sorry, the baud rates we're capable of on this network, uh, 25 meters and below, capable of 1 megabit a second, 100 meters and below, 500 kilobits, 250 meters and below, 250 kilobits. Uh, you'll see that we can have about a kilometer of, uh, of, of CAN bus network. Uh, and again, this is specific to CAN bus, not Unitronics. We take a look at the cable. Uh, we require, not recommend, uh, shielded thick cable. You see there's a pair, uh, red and black for power, and a pair for data, the blue and white. We also have a shield. Uh, so this is a five cable, uh, five, five wire cable, I should say. Unitronics protocols we offer. Uh, first off, we have the CAN bus ISC, which is the inner slave connection. Uh, this protocol was developed. Can I, I'm sorry, can you hear me? Can, you hear? can everyone else hear me? Yes. Okay. Maybe Paul uh, need to turn up your volume a little bit. Seems like everyone else can hear. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay, so Unitronics protocols we offer. First off, we have the CAN bus ISC, which is the inter-slave connection. This was developed for the M91 series uh, and, and U90 ladder. This is our first proprietary CAN protocol. Uh, it was very good at its time. Uh, there's a couple limitations. Really, this protocol is good for sharing information between eight controllers at a time. Again, we can have up to 64 uh, controllers on the network, but only eight can talk to each other. Using this protocol, uh, we need to include a layered topology where seven controllers will talk to one master, and then those, if we gather seven masters, they can talk to another master. Uh, we can build a hierarchy with this, uh, but it wasn't the most efficient at sharing data with all the controllers. So with, uh, with Visilogic, uh, in later developments, we developed the Unicam protocol. And Unicam is really the best way we have of sharing information between Unitronics controllers. We can have up to 60 devices on the Unicam network, and we'll see that this includes controllers and remote I.O. In addition to our Unican and ISC protocols, uh, we offer third-party protocols. Uh, CanOpen is a very popular and widely used CAN protocol. We offer a CAN bus layer 2, which you can think of uh, in terms of our ASCII protocol function block. This is uh, an undefined 
CAM protocol. We have also the ability to parse out uh, messages and pull information uh, from the messages and build also uh, packets to send out on the CAN bus. So if we have an undefined CAN, uh, we can work with it. In addition, with the enhanced controllers, we've added the J1939 automotive CAN bus protocol. Uh, this is for talking to automotive uh, vehicles like the ECU in, uh, in trains and, and, automotive, uh, and automotive networks. CAN bus network to PC. Uh, with Unican, we have the ability to bridge a network using an RS-232 cable to the PC. So if we have a controller running Visilogic, we can connect to the RS-232 port of a single controller on the CAN bus network, and we can communicate to all of the controllers, meaning we can download programs, or we can make changes, or we can view live with any of our software that supports uh, network communication. So Visilogic, remote operator, remote access, data export, all these communications are available over the CAN bus network. So uh, in terms of communication, this is one big advantage of the UNICAM protocol. As I mentioned earlier, we have the ISC, the inner, inner slave connection. Uh, this protocol can share 16 system bits and 16 inputs uh, and two system integers over the network. Um, we can communicate, again, to seven other controllers, so we can share information, uh, not with everyone, but with uh, certain controllers on the network. Uh, we're not going to focus on the ISC, but it's important to know it's available. The M90 models only support the ISC. The Vision controllers support Unican plus the ISC. So if we need to create a network where we talk to the M90 controllers, we can use the ISC protocol, or we can use Modbus over RS-232 or 485. Oops, going the wrong way. Now, to our Unicam protocol. Unicam is a multi-master protocol. Again, we support up to 60 devices on the network. Uh, Multi-master means that each controller has the capability of sending to any other controller that is on the network. If I have controller 1 and I want to send messages to controller 5, I can do that. As well, if I want to send messages from controller 3 to 5, we can do that. It's not a master-slave protocol, as you might be familiar with Modbus. Uh, there's no asking for messages. There's simply sending. Uh, we can create a lot of different structures with this that we'll see. Unican, as I mentioned, is the best way to share information across the Unitronics network. We can send up to 32 messages in a scan. Uh, each message contains 16 memory integers, and we can have the capability of sending 16 high priority and 16 low priority messages. So that would be 32 messages or 512 memory integers uh, in a single program scan. So again, there's a lot of potential available with the, Uni the Unicam protocol. And we'll briefly take a look at the functions we have available with Unican. Uh, the first one uh, is the CAN bus setup. Uh, we'll take a look at all these in application, but quickly, uh, under our common initialization, you notice we have to select Unican, and we have to select a baud rate. Uh, so we're going to be using 250 kilobits. Again, that's good for up to uh, 25 uh, meters. Uh, also, we have to assign a unit ID number. So the unit ID number is the way we're going to address each specific controller. Again, it's going to be between 1 and 60. Okay. So our first Unican function block is the send registers function block. Uh, using this, we can send a message to any controller. We can send up to 16 memory integers. And we can set the priority as high or low. And we'll take a look at what all these uh, ladder specific functions are in an application. We also have the capability of broadcasting a message to every controller on the network. Specifically, we can broadcast a bit and a memory integer to each controller. The broadcast function block will we select the memory bit and the memory integer we'd like to send, and in every controller we'll receive the bit and system bit 200, the memory integer and system bit 200, I'm sorry, system integer 200, and the network address of the controller that sent it in system integer 201. 
Again, this is how we can share information to every controller at the same time. We also have a check alive function. Uh, what the check alive function does is check to see that each controller is available on the network. Each controller will broadcast a check alive packet every half second. What the function block will do is listen to a specific controller's check alive. We can use this to create a timer function. Uh, in the example here, the timer is set for two seconds. So if we miss four check alives, we'll know that the controller is not available on the network and we can do something, whether it's uh, alert and alarm or simply not send information to that controller and route it somewhere else. Um, we also have a message arrive function. Uh, the input for this is the controller that we're interested in seeing a message come from. When we receive a message from this controller, the linked memory bit will go high for a single scan. Using this, we will know if we received a message from controller 5 or controller 6, and we can route the information to the appropriate register uh, depending on which controller we sent it from. Uh, one interesting piece of information we have available as well is system integers 240 to 243. Uh, they offer a bitmap of each specific controller, and the bit for the appropriate controller will be high for, uh, for a single scan as well. So that's, in, an, in a quick overview, the Unicam protocol. We're going to look at some specific examples. Again, first, we're going to look at communication between two controllers. Um, okay. I'm going to exit here. And I'm going to look at Visilogic. And I have an application set up on two 570 controllers. And I'll show you the online view. Give me one second to get this set up. So what we see here is the HMI view of both of our controllers. Uh, we can see we have a couple of pieces of information. First off, communication OK. Uh, we'll take a look at this one in a second, but let's look at how we send a packet or send a piece of information. So on the COM1, I'm sorry, unit 1, I'm going to change the values to 1, 2, 3, and also uh, 2, 3, 4. And we'll hit the send button, and we expect these values to show up in the received from unit 1. And they do. And we notice we have also a message arrived. Uh, we can do the same for unit 2. We'll send 4, 3, 2. And three, two, one. Oops, that's okay. And notice the information shows up here, and we have a message arrived. Now, if I unplug the CAN bus cable from one of these controllers, we notice we have a message that states error with COM error with unit one and COM error with unit two. When I plug the controller back up, the communication is okay. Okay, so these are a couple of little functions that we're going to look at in the ladder now. I'm going to close these online views, and I'm going to bring up the application for CAN1, and then we'll compare the similarities to the uh, Unit 2 program. Okay, so in Net1, again, whenever we have communication, we use our SB2 power-up bit. The first thing we have to do is initialize the COM port, and then we set up the protocol. So with Unican, it's a little simpler. All we have to do in the COM initialization is select Unican from our drop-down list and select the baud rate. Now, while we're here, it's worth mentioning uh, the COM initialization, uh, if we're familiar with our RS-232 and 485, is where we select our COM 1, 2, or 3. Again, if we're using our CAN bus ISC, if we want to talk to an M90 series controller, we'll select that here. We have our Unican protocol. In addition, uh, our can open and can layer two, and for enhanced controllers, we can run multiple protocols at the same time. Specifically, we can run can open and unicam.